New at 11, the potential cost of replenishing our beaches. Each year, billions are spent in South Florida and elsewhere, but tonight, some are saying there is trouble in the sand. As sea levels rise, the need to, for beach renourishment is only going to grow. Well, tonight, CBS 4's Jim DeFitti takes a closer look at how one man's life was changed forever after a day on Miami Beach. I've been on Long Island at the beach all the time, and you generally expect the water just to slope down naturally. In December 2016, Andrew Gallo waded into the waters off Miami Beach. The 25-year-old dove headfirst into a wave, striking his head on a sandbar, leaving him paralyzed from the neck down. Gallo's accident was undeniably a tragedy, but it also may have been an example of the unintended consequences of beach renourishment. This, this looks like good sand. Do you get much wave action here? Researchers John Fleidemeyer, John Heron, and Brian House have been studying this very issue for the past two years. They found that after beach renourishment projects, there was a significant increase in the number of drownings and serious accidents along those very same beaches. In Ocean City, Maryland, for instance, there was a 297% increase in serious accidents in the year following new sand being added. At Cape May, New Jersey, accidents rose by 197% following beach renourishment. We're not alarmists by any means, but we definitely uh, want to raise an awareness. Depending on how the sand is added, a portion of that sand will be tracked back into the ocean, creating new sandbars and increasing the number of rip currents. In Delray Beach, following a beach renourishment project in 2008, the number of flash rip current warnings increased from three to 22 after the new sand was added. After any beach nourishment project, there is significant money spent on assessing how it impacts sea turtle nesting. And everybody loves the sea turtles, but there's been zero dollars spent on how it impacts beach safety, swimmer safety, uh, and other recreational activities on the beach. In October 2017, the TRIO published their findings in the Journal of Coastal Research and have been trying to get officials from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers to take their concerns seriously. We should uh, design the projects in a way that minimizes the impact, and that should be one of the considerations. Right now, it isn't, it isn't on the, the suite of things that are considered when doing the project. It's important to, to recognize with the sea level rising, which is undeniable, that uh, the, the beaches are going to continue to erode. And uh, right now, the only, only practice that makes sense to anyone is to dump sand on the beach at the cost, in some cases, of billions of dollars. And when that happens, we have to also be aware of potential impact that's having on public safety. I remember I was having really bad dreams at the time, nightmares and very vivid hallucinations. You can't say with 100% certainty, like this beach nourishment project called, caused this injury. What we're saying is there is significant amount of evidence, both scientific and anecdotal, to suggest that there is a correlation and it needs to be studied in greater detail and the projects need to be designed to minimize those impacts. Andrew Gallo hopes his accident will cause officials to take notice. It's very easy to save lives. I would never wish this injury on my worst enemy. Jim DeFeedy, CBS4 News Tonight.